Hey everyone, this is Cliff, aka The Urban Prepper, and we are all living in unprecedented times right now during this coronavirus COVID-19 outbreak which has spread all across the world. If you're a prepper, this is exactly the type of event that we've been preparing for for years now, and most likely the whole way you're getting made fun of by your family and friends. Well, right now, most likely you are seen as the leader in your community for preparedness measures. So for this particular video, we're gonna be discussing some of the things that I've actively been doing. Yes, I'm safe, my family is safe, we've been preparing for something like this for years now. But we're just trying to make sure that our closest friends and family are also prepared to weather this storm. So I'm gonna give some recommendations on things that you could still do even at this time. A lot of the store shelves are bare for essential items, but there are still some items that you can get. So I'm gonna give you some recommendations on some things that you could do for, to prepare, and then we'll just talk a little bit about the strategy going forward with this COVID-19 outbreak. So let's get started with this video now. Again, you are the resistance. So this video is gonna be a little bit looser than my normal videos. Normally I try to be very meticulous as far as the organization and the planning of the video. On this one, I wrote a little one page outline as far as the topics that I wanted to discuss for this video. I felt that speed was more important in this video than quality. So if there are some little mess ups in my dialogue, please forgive me. A lot of you know that I'm located in the greater Seattle area, which was basically ground zero for the coronavirus outbreak here in the United States. We had a lot of cases. And you could kind of see the writing on the wall that something was gonna happen as far as a shelter in place or a quarantine scenario. So for the past several weeks, I've slowly been stockpiling on expanding our pantry preps. And I have a lot of emergency food storage stored in various locations like the rice and beans and the Mylar bags or MREs or Mountain House or Legacy Food Storage or Thrive Food Storage or My Patriot Supply. Uh, you name it, I probably have it. But I don't wanna break into those right away. I'd rather just rotate in stuff from our pantry so it's just we're eating as normal to help with morale purposes. We have a pantry located in our kitchen. We also have one in the garage. I also have one in an offsite location but we've been expanding upon our pantry so much that we had to build, not build, but basically add an additional shelving area in our kitchen area to expand upon. So we've been slowly adding the stuff from the various Costco runs and grocery store runs to those shelves that are located in the kitchen area. I posted a photo of this particular shelving area on my Instagram page and a lot of people were concerned that, hey, it's right next to a window. Someone's gonna see it and they're gonna wanna break in and take it. Well, that particular window is actually on the second floor porch, so you'd have to be a tactical ninja to be able to scale it, to be able to see that. You can't really see it from the ground level. But that said, I still included a curtain over it, so you can't really see it now anyway, even if you were a tactical ninja. So fortunately, I was able to expand upon our pantry preps at the early stages of this outbreak. But right now, if you were to go to Costco or to your local grocery store, most likely you're not gonna be able to find a lot of the items that you see so far in this expansion pantry preps that I've shown in this video. You're probably gonna have a hard time finding rice and finding beans and finding spaghetti sauce and finding pasta and things like that. So it's time to get a little bit creative. So for this particular portion of the video, I'm gonna talk about some of the things that you could still get, whether you're a new prepper or you're an existing prepper and just want to expand upon some of your emergency preparedness supplies. So let's talk now on some things that you could still prep for even today. The first thing that I recommend that you do is get your barbecue grill ready to go, like it's the start of summer. That's right, go outside, fire up the grill, make sure that it's ready to go, and then make sure that you have at least three propane tanks. So the standard size propane tanks that you use for outdoor grills, make sure that you have at least three of them. And at any point, you may have to downsize that grill from the large version that you would normally do for a barbecue or a party or something like that, and then downsize to one of the camping size emergency stoves, which we've covered in a previous video, something like a cold Coleman stove, a smaller one, it could be a grill or a stove. And you could get a lot of cooking out of those large propane tanks with a smaller stove like that. So again, get your barbecue grill ready to go. By the way, for all the things that I'm gonna recommend, they're all stuff that people aren't gonna look at you weird like you're prepping or anything like that. It's gonna look like very standard things and that goes with the whole gray man concept. So we're gonna be blending in, no one's gonna know that you're really prepping. The next thing I recommend doing, if you can, is to invest in a freezer, whether that be an upright or just a box freezer and have it in your garage or in your basement area. If you go to the grocery stores right now, you're gonna see a lot of the common items already sold out, rice, beans, pasta, spaghetti sauce. But if you go over to that frozen section, there's still a lot of supplies left to be had. You could get frozen lasagnas. I recommend going and getting some various meats and freezing them, whether those be just a pound of ground beef, if you happen to eat meat, 
meat. Uh, for vegans, you're gonna have to go a different route. But we like meat over in our family, so I recommend going with anything that you could freeze. I've been freezing bacon, I've been freezing uh, uh, pork, pork shoulder, and various steaks, and bratwurst, you name it. It's been going into the freezer that we have in our garage. So I went to a local appliance store and got a, actually a used freezer for a fairly decent price. But if you can, invest in a freezer. You could also find bread at your grocery stores, at least what I've been seeing. A lot of people haven't been buying bread as much from what I've seen because bread goes bad after a few weeks. But if you freeze it, it can last for a lot longer. So I've been stockpiling on bread that I've been putting into our freezer and then we'll be taking it out as needed. So again, get a freezer if you don't already have one and start looking at stockpiling on your meats and your breads because you could store those in the freezer and they're still readily available. Also the various items that are available in the frozen section of your grocery stores are still most likely available. So those could be uh, frozen corn dogs or burritos or frozen vegetables, you name it, you'll probably still be able to find that in the frozen section. So again, if you don't already have one, get a freezer. While we're on the topic of grocery stores, your average grocery store like a Fred Meyer or Safeway or Albertsons or Winco, most likely they've been stripped pretty bare for the essentials. But I recommend going to those more expensive grocery stores like Whole Foods, AKA Whole Paycheck. Most people don't do their preps over at Whole Foods because it's a little bit more expensive. But so far I've found that those organic or Whole Foods style grocery stores still have a lot of supplies available. I even saw bottled water over there, which is long gone in any other grocery store in addition to the pot pastas and the spaghetti sauces. You're gonna spend a little bit more, but you're actually gonna be able to get it. So I recommend taking a look at Whole Foods and other natural stores that might be in your area. Also, uh, meat and produce stores that are available in different areas of town. Those also have some items still available. So again, if you're gonna to go to a grocery store, try looking at some of the more fancier grocery stores that you might not normally, just because it's a little bit more expensive, but at least you'll be able to find some stuff there. So that's my other recommendation. The next thing that you should do if you have one is take out your generator from the garage, fire it up, make sure that it's still working and that you have enough gas. I recommend having at least 15 to 20 gallons of gas ready to go with the stabilizer put in it. I like the Honda generators. I think they're awesome. They're quiet enough. And if you needed to power your freezer or something like that, you could use the generator for that. So you should already be firing up your generator about once a month or so. But if you haven't done so for a while, just make sure that your generator is still working. If you don't have a generator, I'll include in the a link in the description box I like the Honda ones you could get it ever at Home Depot or even online at other places so make sure you have a generator that you're able to power that freezer just in case so far we've been talking a lot about food or ways of storing the food or preparing the food because food and water is the most important things to prep for we always talk about food water shelter and the next item is no different so what I recommend getting if you don't already have one is invest in a Dutch oven so a camping style Dutch oven like the ones that are made from Lodge Lodge makes great Dutch oven in addition to cast iron cookware so get whether it be a two quart or a ten quart whatever you could get Dutch ovens provide you a lot of different flexibility for preparing food you could cook pizzas in there you could bake bread you can make stews you, you name it there's a lot of cool things that you could do with that a lot of boy scouts are using dutch ovens and we have a couple as well so take a look at a large dutch oven i'll include a link in the description box if you don't already have one invest in a dutch oven it'll provide you with a lot of different cooking options just in case you run out of propane just in case the power is out if you run out of gas you could still use that dutch oven the next thing that I recommend is don't let your gas tank get below 75% full. Try to keep it as full as possible for the foreseeable future. A lot of people let it go all the way down to a quarter tank, maybe even half a tank. I recommend right now during this period, don't let it go below 75% full. If you can, try to keep it at 100% full at all times. If you're looking for N95 respirator masks, good luck, because you're gonna have a hard time finding them nowadays. They're just basically a shortage all across the world. Around four or five years ago, I was able to get enough boxes for my family, but they're just in short supply right now. You could try going with Mira Safety and getting a full face gas mask, such as the CM6M gas mask, in addition to a Particle Max P3 virus filter, which is specifically designed for viruses such as the coronavirus. Although you're gonna to have to wait several weeks for it to actually arrive in the mail because they're just long back ordered. I have heard that P100 masks are still out there because people aren't looking for them as much as they are looking for N95 masks, but you're gonna to have to look around. 
You could still find the ready mask at some locations, although these two are also going out of stock very quickly. It's kind of a unique design where you basically you're covering your nose and your mouth with the mask as normal, but you also have this eye protection, which is actually stuck to your face. So you take off a little piece of protective material and it's almost like you have a tape that creates a better seal around your face to protect it during viruses and things like that. You could purchase these directly from ready mask if you want, although it looks like they're almost out of stock. I do have a contact. I provided a link in the description box below if you're interested in these who still has a few thousand of these remaining so i'll include a link to that i'm actually working on a product review of this particular mask it's something that you could put in your edc kits for example if you saw my edc messenger bag you saw that i had more of a co2 like a smoke mask it's in a similar style of this as far as a single use open it up in case of emergency and this is very similar to that although this is for viruses and things like that so again i've included a link in the description box if you're interested in the ready mask you could get it and there's still supply left for this particular contact that I have, check the link in the description box. You've probably noticed that the hand sanitizer is long gone, so you're going to have to make your own hand sanitizer. Make sure you check out Rogue Preparedness video. She has a great video on how to make hand sanitizer. My wife has been very into making hand sanitizer for the past few weeks now. So you're going to have to do that for the time being because you're going to have a hard time finding just regular hand sanitizer at your grocery store. So learn how to make hand sanitizer. Check out Rogue Preparedness video on that. After this pandemic goes away, we're all gonna have the cleanest hands in the world because I'm sure we've all been actively washing our hands like crazy and using hand sanitizer like crazy. If you're using that hand sanitizer though, it's, it's alcohol-based and most likely your hands are starting to get a little dry. You're probably getting cracks in your skin. So if you are getting cracks in your skin, pick up a few jars of Bag Balm. I highly recommend Bag Balm. I did a video of it about a year ago. It'll resolve the chap skin that you're probably getting from actively using that alcohol-based hand sanitizer. So pick up a few jars a bag bomb. The next items are for morale boosters, especially if you have children. I'm finding that my kids are getting a little stir crazy because we're actively sheltering in place and socially distancing ourselves during this pandemic season. So what I recommend doing when you go to your grocery store, again, you're not going to find rice, you're not going to find pasta, you're not going to find spaghetti sauce. But if you go over to that candy bar aisle, you're going to find candy bars over there because people aren't really prepping for candy bars. And I find that they're great morale boosters, especially for the kids. It gives them something to look forward to at the end of the day, whether it be a half of a snicker bar or you name it so what I've done is I've gone and picked up a few boxes of candy bars just to have on hand for morale purposes also if you happen to have a freezer make sure to pick up some other little treats like ice cream or popsicles or fudgesicles or anything like that and storing those in the freezer those are also great morale boosters for the kids the weather's starting to get a little hotter too so it's going to be a good item to have Lastly, make sure you pick up a few games, such some kind of games to keep the kids occupied. You don't want them to just veg out over on the video games all the time. If you could get some board games, again, I covered board games in a previous video about a year and a half ago, I think now. Get some board games that you and the family could play because we may be bunkering in place for an extended period of time. You want to have some sort of entertainment, so pick up some board games. A lot of people are going over to the grocery stores to get food supplies. What I'm gonna recommend now is your Home Depot preps. So going over to your Home Depot or Lowe's or McClendon's or whatever your hardware store is because there's still some non-food items that you should probably get for this emergency situation. The first items to get for your Home Depot preps are batteries. I did a video of batteries a few years back. I recommend having a good assortment of batteries, namely AA batteries and AAA batteries. Those are the most common ones. You may still have some devices that are C or D batteries or nine volt, but mainly get AA and AAA batteries. You can use them for a variety of things in addition for bartering. While you're at your local Home Depot, go to the bathroom section where the toilets are and see if they happen to have a bidet or a bidet attachment that you could attach to your toilet just in case you run out of toilet paper. You're gonna have a hard time finding toilet paper at a store, but you may still be able to find a bidet or a portable bidet. I recently did a video on the portable bottle bidets that you could use for washing that certain area after each use. So if you don't wanna use your left hand and you don't have, know how to use the three seashell method that we saw in Demolition Man, make sure you get a bidet just to clean that certain area in case you run out of toilet paper. So again, go see if you can find a bidet. Next, pick up a few rolls of duct tape. I recommend the Gorilla duct tape, just in case you need to make a containment room in your home if someone happens to be sick. I recently did a video on how to make a containment room. You may have to use this at this period of time. So again, I recommend going with Gorilla duct tape. Normally I say use gaffer tape because it's a little less permanent, for the, but for this particular situation, I think you should get a few rolls of Gorilla duct tape just in case you need to make a long-term containment room in your home for a sick person. 
To go along with the duct tape, you're also gonna to wanna to have some plastic sheeting, a lot of plastic sheeting. I recommend going with at least four mil plastic sheeting that you could get over at your Home Depot or you could even order it online. Again, I recently made a video on how to do a DIY containment room, basically using a bunch of tape and plastic sheeting if you needed to quarantine someone off that happens to be sick. So again, make sure you pick up a few rolls of four mil plastic sheeting. The next items that I recommend are picking up a few boxes of the Husky contractor bags for sanitation purposes. Just in case the garbage man doesn't come for a period of time, you're gonna to wanna to store your trash. And so the contractor bags are really good. They're super thick and they have a lot of other uses too. You could even use them for uh, shielding off your windows. You could use them for emergency sleeping bags, you name it. Make sure you have a few boxes of the Husky contractor bags. The last item for your Home Depot preps goes along with that Dutch oven that we talked about earlier, and that's picking up a few bags of charcoal. You're gonna to wanna to use that for controlling the temperature of your Dutch oven so you could bake bread, for example, if need be outside. So go with a few bags of charcoal. You could also get one of those little cans that helps heat up the, the charcoal fairly rapidly in addition to some lighter fluid. No one's gonna think anything of it. They're just probably gonna think that you're having a barbecue, but really you're planning your, to use your Dutch oven for baking if need be. There's an exact formula on how many charcoals to put on the top and on the bottom of a Dutch oven to control various temperatures and that's what you're going to want to have this for. So again, pick up some charcoal in addition to lighter fluid. One of the things that we've done in our home is to kind of prepare where our containment room is going to be. Again, I've talked about containment rooms. We might actually have to deploy this at some period of time. So again, we're going to have that plastic sheeting and tape, but we also are going to need to have some form of entertainment in there because someone's going to be cooped up in there for a little bit. So what we've done is basically have a very small TV in there and I actually purchased an Amazon Fire Stick so we had some form of entertainment, assuming that the electricity and the cable is still running. So if you pick up an Amazon Fire Stick, they're fairly affordable, put it on a very small TV that's in your containment room, then you at least have some form of entertainment. If you have Netflix or the Disney Channel or Amazon Prime, you could still watch some movies and series and things like that. Make sure that your containment room is near a window. That's what we've done. Just in case you need to bring in supplies or take out supplies of the containment room, you could do that through the window outside to help avoid spreading the contamination. Another thing that we've done is we've put one of our HEPA air filters in the containment room if need be. Again, HEPA filtration filters 99.97% of viruses and things like that. So if you have a HEPA air filter for your home, put it in the containment room to help filter the air in that particular room. So far, the cellular network's still good. We still have internet, we still have cable, we can still make phone calls and send text messages. But if you haven't already thought about comms, you might wanna start thinking about comms just in case. One thing you might wanna consider looking into is investing in a drone. A lot of us use drones for our YouTube videos, but you could also use a drone for surveillance and intel purposes. You could basically patrol your whole neighborhood with a drone from up ahead and get overhead shots of what's going on in your area, just to see if there's any problem areas in the nearby vicinity. So you can get a drone for as cheap as around $300 for a decent quality one, up to more of like around 1500 bucks. But if you have a drone and a method of charging that drone, for example, you may have the Energy Apex solar generator with some large solar panels, you'd be able to constantly charge up that drone's battery and use it on a daily basis for patrolling. I also recently did a video with the Gotenna mesh attached to a drone to be able to use as a communication device as well. That may be something that you might wanna look into at this point of time. In conclusion, we are living in very scary times right now. There's no way of beating around the bush. This could go south really quickly, but this is the kind of thing that we've been preparing for as preppers. Hopefully we've gotten our mind to a prepared mind where we could handle a situation like this, where we could stay level-headed, to stay calm, to, and to think strategically, and to help out those that are closest to us, our family and our close, close friends. There's gonna be a lot of people that are gonna turn on us as preppers eventually and look at us as just hoarders. They're probably gonna label us and see that we have resource and what resources and are gonna to wanna to try to exploit that. So be on the active lookout for that because that is definitely a possibility. Right now, it really feels that society's immune system is down on a worldwide basis, on a country, on a regional. We're on our ropes right now due to the coronavirus and the COVID-19. What I'm most concerned about, I'm concerned about the coronavirus, but I'm also concerned about a secondary event that could really put us over the edge. I mean, can you imagine if something bad happened like a natural disaster, like an earthquake, for example, in the Pacific Northwest, in combination with the, the whole pandemic happening right now with the coronavirus. We need to be mindful of these type of events happening because it could get far worse very quickly 
from a variety of different things, whether it be natural or man-made. So as us preppers, hopefully we could stay calm, stay level-headed, be able to provide assistance to the closest people to us and to be on the lookout for people that are gonna to wanna to exploit us because that's just the nature of how people are in times of need. So I hope everyone stays safe. Keep watching the videos. I'm gonna keep cranking out videos as much as I can. I've included a lot of information in the description box for the stuff that's been talked about in this video. Again, everyone stay safe out there, stay calm, keep a level head. And again, we are the resistance. See you guys next time.